Hello and welcome to the 14th tutorial on the Cocos Code IDE series. In this part we're going to be looking at running a project on an iOS device. This tutorial assumes you have set up and generated a project. To run it on an iOS device you, are, you will obviously need a Mac and an iOS device. Firstly, what you want to do is install the pre-built runtime which is required for remote debugging of your apps. It is located in, to show you, if you go to wherever your project directory is, for me it is Documents, Cocos 2, Cocos JS Game, Runtime, iOS, and then just open this IPA. And when you open it, I've already opened it, it will launch into iTunes. Then you want to go to your device. For me, it's an iPad. Click on Apps, and then you will see the pre built runtime here. You click Install, click Apply, and just wait for this application to fully install. Okay, now that our application has installed, what you want to do is we can just minimize iTunes for now. Go to Cocos Code IDE. You want to click this debug configurations icon, and then you want to go down here, click remote debugging. You want to launch your application or the remote, the pre-built runtime on your device. When you launch it for the first time, it will say, "Do you want to trust or not trust it?" Because it's not from Apple, it's not from the App Store. You want to trust it, obviously, otherwise you can't use it. And on there will display the IP address that you need to use. For me, it is 192.168.0.8. And obviously, you want to select iOS. So I'm just going to click Close from here. I've launched the application. And there's two ways debugging. There's remote debug, and which supports breakpoints but has low performance. Then there's remote run, which has no breakpoints but higher performance. This is great when you implement new features. You want to test them out, but you want to be able to debug it. This is great when you're happy with the features, happy with the game or a certain part, and you just want to test its raw performance. So let's just go to our app.js. I'm just going to add a random breakpoint here and so you can see the difference. So I'm just going to start recording my device. So this is what it looks like when you open the pre-built runtime and this is the IP address that I was talking about. It's in waiting for file transfer. So if we click this Mac, I mean this remote debug icon. I didn't see this has popped up, but what you may have noticed this has changed because it has launched. It's just it's hit the breakpoint. So if we click yes, it's the breakpoint has been triggered and now if we wanted to we can check variable status, check the code, we can dry run it, we can do a lot of stuff. So that is great. But if we just go back to JavaScript and if we click the remote run icon, only if I need to bear with us a second, uh, let's click cancel, open up the runtime, Click the remote run. As you see, it has successfully run now. It hasn't triggered the breakpoint, even though there is a breakpoint still here because it doesn't have breakpoint support. The remote run doesn't. So that is the difference between the remote debug and the remote run. It's literally that simple to run your do your run running application on an iOS device. The next tutorial will cover packaging and iOS API. If you have any questions on anything, feel free to message us at support at sonarsystems.co.uk. The email will be in the description. You can comment on this video just directly message us via YouTube. And as usual, thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.